I'm Kevin Flanagan. I am an investigator at the Center for Gene Therapy at Nationwide Children's Hospital in Columbus, Ohio, and a professor of pediatrics and neurology at The Ohio State University in Columbus. We're at, a, uh, I think, an exciting point in the development of therapies for Duchenne muscular dystrophy because there's actually several exciting potential routes of therapy now entering trials or in trials. I think um, perhaps the most attention has been paid to exon skipping therapies, uh, which um, in animal models have shown great promise, and at least in some of the human studies have also shown like they might have a real uh, effect on the course of the disease in some patients. And it's important to know that following on these are, are uh, sort of second generation approaches to exon skipping, which will um, uh, presumably have a, even a larger effect, we would expect. I think this is um, one of the exciting routes of therapy. Of course, exon skipping therapy is directed towards specific mutations, and there's a couple of exciting approaches uh, that are not dependent on one mutation class or another, including um, att attempts to address the fibrotic pathways involved in um, losing function over time in, uh, when dystrophin is absent. And I think perhaps the most exciting, the one that are, is, uh, I have a little, little bias here perhaps, but I think gene therapies are really quite exciting. Both uh, gene replacement therapies like microdystrophin approaches, as well as uh, surrogate gene therapies. For example, using beta-4 galnac transferase, a, a new surrogate gene therapy that's just entering trials at our institution. Um, I think that these have a really a, a realistic possibility of altering the disease course, right? Well, I think it's worth distinguishing. We're very close in translating them into trials. So uh, we have to distinguish trials, I'm afraid, from treatments for some of these. You know, uh, uh, certainly everything I mentioned is already in clinical trials. Uh, microdystrophin gene therapies are in clinical trials. Surrogate gene therapies are in clinical trials. You know, these first trials for gene therapies have to be done cautiously. We have to make sure that we do no harm. We have to make sure they're safe. Uh, that's sometimes a time-consuming process to do patients sequentially, make sure that uh, we get no safety signals that suggest to us we should not use these. Now, the favorite virus that is used for gene transfer trials is adeno-associated virus, or AAV. And AAV, there's a growing body of experience of using AAV for human diseases without significant safety signals in essentially every case. So it gives us confidence as we move forward that we might be able to accelerate that. Certainly those are already in trials when it's going to be a couple more years probably before we can think of them as therapies for general use, but I, I think we're headed in the right direction. There are other very exciting therapies that patients ask me about a lot. For example, genome editing therapies like CRISPR-Cas9 technology. Um, this shows great promise, extraordinary promise. In fact, it's hard to imagine any tool that's been ad adapted more quickly than CRISPR-Cas9 technologies in the laboratory for experimental purposes. There are significant challenges to picturing how we're going to translate that into human trials. So I often uh, have parents who come in having read about it online, very excited about it, and we're excited about it. I'm excited about it too. but. Um, Realistically, the issues about making sure that's targeted appropriately, making sure we get it to all the nuclei we need to in muscle, you know, muscle is in large mass of the body. That's a, more of a challenge right now uh, to think about. So I think that's farther away. Um, it's exciting, but really much farther away from AAV-based gene therapies or gene replacement.